Welcome to Live Doff, your online Doff Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem and welcome back to today's Daf. Baba Metziah and Zayin. We are holding two lines off the top, three lines off the top of the Ahmad V'Amar Rabbah. Here comes another halacha in the name of Rabbah. Hi man, this fellow who went ahead and hired workers, Do'igir Aguri, what for? L'davla, to draw water and to water his field. Or his fields, as Rashi says. Vahashkris Sodais. Vaosa Mitra, suddenly rain shows up. And job's over. Everything's watered. What now? Do they just uh, walk away empty handed or must he pay uh, the full salary? So, what is the Allah say to pay Alam? It's their loss. Look, he hired them for a reason. There's no need. So, uh, show's over, right? Job's done. And you can't really pin the blame on him more than on them because rain is a natural phenomenon which he didn't, did not anticipate he did not uh, have any uh, you know forewarning more than they do right so they just uh, walk away and he uh, he has no need to pay them for the rest of the uh, you know unfinished work but also nahara what if the river you know, the tide rose and it spilled over into the irrigation channels, watering all the fields. No need for them to manually water the fields. Whose loss is that? Meaning, do they just have to absorb the loss, walk away without pay? Or does he have to compensate them for the unfinished, uh, you know, job? Say to develop bias, he has to absorb the loss. He has to pay them, not full salary. Basic rate, we are look at pale bottle, like we discussed the other day. You know, pale bottle means how much a person would be willing to um, take as pay, like a minimum wage, to forego like heavy work and just sit around and you know do some, do nothing or something very um, you know light work. So how much of a salary cut would he be willing to take? So basic, you know, minimum wage. That's what he gives them. So he gives them something. And the reason here is because he. And only he, as opposed to them, he knew what was going on. He knew that the river could show up one day and do the job for them. He should have forewarned them. He should have stipulated. He should have, you know, given them the choice. Look, this may happen. Are you willing to go ahead with it regardless? Are you willing to take the risk? Leave it up to them. He didn't inform. He misinformed them. He held back that information. He has to reimburse them. Ve'amar Rava, here comes another Allah from Rava. Hi, Manda Igir Aguril Davla. His fellow hired workers to manually water his fields. Upasak Nahara, they're drawing from the river, and suddenly there's no river, it dries up. It pounded the air midday. No river, no water, no work. What happens now? So it depends. Eli Avid, the Pasak, if it's not common for this to happen, then you can't put blame on the uh, employer for not warning them in advance and therefore say to pay elements their loss uh, he doesn't pay them for the rest of the unfinished you know work of it the pasuk but if it commonly happens that there's no water then again it depends Ibn Masa if these workers are local residents who are aware of the local phenomena then say to the pile they absorb the loss but if they're foreigners, say the Balabais, then he must take the hit. The, the owner, because he should have told him about this possibility. Ve'amarava, a third halacha, in the name of Rava. Haiman da agar guru a fellow hired workers, to do a specific job today. Ushlim avid to pagod the yayma, 12 o'clock they're done. No more of that work to do. What happens now? He hired them for the day. Can he give them other work to do? Well, it depends. Depends how difficult that other work is. If his other job is lighter, is easier than this one, you have you can give it to them. Inami or the kavasa of equal severity, you can give them that job. But if it's more difficult, we can't. Send them to the other job. has to pay them in full, as if, as if they're working. Why in full? 
Minimum wage. Am I? Why does he have to pay them in full? The lace of Luke could a bottle. Let him just be required to give them you know, the minimum answers the Gemara, you're right, typically that's the case, but here it's an exception because they're not interested in taking a pay cut for less difficult work. They like to work. These are the driven people of Mechayza, right? The uh, shrewd business people over here, actually, we're speaking about, you know, laborers, they like working. These schleppers, these fellows who are accustomed to heavy logging and working. If they sit down and do nothing, they get weakened. They like working. They're active people. They're energetic people. They like work. They don't want to take a pay cut for doing nothing. They're not interested in that. So therefore, you hire them for the day. You have no work. Keep on paying. Okay, now let's go back and reanalyze that. So let's take it line by line. That You know, that price that we had the other day. Yesterday's stuff about the um, fellows who came to work and they quit midway. Okay, so they were hired for a job worth two sella. Okay, they contracted to do the job for two sella and they quit midway after doing 50%. Oh, so we learned in the price. We take a look at what they did. And based on that, they get paid. Case okay, so for instance, So even if the remainder of the job would cost the balabais six dinar to complete. So let's say it was two sella for the entire thing. A sella is four dinar, right? So two sella, eight dinar for the entire job. They did half. But now they quit. And you know how it is to get a new person to finish the job will cost you more than half of the original rate. Right? right? So you're going to end up paying six dinar to finish the job. So you're going to be absorbing a loss of two dinar. If you pay the first workers their full allotment of, of four dinar for 50% of the job. So the Allah is nice to sella. The Rabbanon say still, they deserve a sella as per uh, you know, the, the portion of the work that they did. Despite the fact that the owner is going to be taking a hit, he's going to have to pay six dinar to finish the job. Why? Because Savi Rabban, Rabban hold, this is different than the Rabdaisa and our Mishnah, beginning of Hashem, so who say that the, the worker is going to be taking a loss. No. Yad Poyel Al Yoyna, the worker, has the advantage, as we're going to see later, because Hashem says, B'nai Yisrael are my servants. They're not your, they're not slaves. I mean, you hired him, very nice, but he can walk away midday and quit the job. And that's exactly what they did. They stopped midway. So they deserved payment for the part that they did, despite the fact that it, it's going to cost the owner more, relatively more, to finish the job. Or Yigmur Malachten, that's one option. Or if they finish the whole job, what do they get? They get the full, you know, two sella payment. Prita, obviously, I mean, what's the Chiddush? Litzricha must be speaking, the, the price is covering the following case. The Yakar Vita. Why do they quit? Salaries rose. The price went up. Initially, they were hired for two sellers for the job. Midway, they decided, hey, look, let's go elsewhere and get more. The Imru Payal and the Payal, the workers separated. Imru is Hafrasha. They, they, they quit. They walked off the job. And the owner comes running after him. And Rashi says, <laughs> He begged him. He begged him. Convinced him to come back. Right? Don't worry, I'll take... Right? Mauda Tema. So now, they haven't really stipulated anything. They came back to work. After being, you know, talked back into it. So perhaps they can say, look, you know why we came back? We're sure that you're going to give us a bonus. Matsu Amrile, perhaps they can claim, they can tell them, Kimifai Sinon, the reason why we acquiesced, Adata the Tafas Lona Igra. Because we figured you'll add, you'll increase to the salary. Kamash, one of the point is no. Dharma, you can tell them, look, I, I know I, I was going to take care of you. I let, I, let, I let you believe that I'm going to look after you, but not monetarily, directly monetarily. I'm going to give you extra food, a nicer lunch, Coke instead of RC. Dharma, he says, Adata the Tarachna the Chubachil, will give you better quality food and drink, that's all. But in terms of hard money, 
of course, as per contract only. Okay, Sela. Noisenheim Sela. Now let's say they work and they didn't have the job, for which they deserve a Sela, right? One out of two Sela. And the rest of the work only costs the owner a Sela to finish. So they get their Sela. Shita, well, obviously, why not? I mean, there's no issue here. Nobody's taking any losses. Leitzricha must be speaking like this. The price is covering a case where the Zol Avitamikor, initially when he hired them, it was really less. The going rate, going salary was less than two seller for the job. But he added, Vagruna Batve Zuz, he added a Zuz and brought it up to the, you know, the amount of the two seller for the job. But eventually, once they got, you know, into the job, the overall market rate also went up, a Zuz. And matches the amount that they committed to. Right? So everyone's okay now. But Maudatema, perhaps they can say, look, Amrle, they can tell him, Tfezuza Amrslan, remember? You promised us a bonus. He went above the going rate. Tfezuza Havlan. Now as well, even though the going rate overall has risen, but you promised us a bonus. Give us extra Zuz above and beyond. Kamash Mandachadish is no. The Amrlu, he can tell him, look. I was willing to pay two seller for the job. I saw you, you know, um, you weren't willing to commit to less than two seller, even though the going rate was less. So I said, okay, you know, I'll give you two seller, but not past that, right? I mean, this is what you really want. You want two seller, and this is the going rate. Very great. So we're all uh, on the same page. Normally, you can tell them, when I added the extra, so you didn't know that the going rate was too sell. I mean, it wasn't too sell. It was less than too sell. And you insist on getting it. was fine. I added to too sell. But that was my cap. Now you know everybody's taking too sell. This is the going rate. I'm not interested in paying more than that. Rabbi, so this is Rabbanon, right? Based on the idea that the pile is in the driver's seat. You're not a slave. You're, you're just a laborer. You're just hired. And you can walk away midway. You can quit without penalty. Rab Daisa, however, takes a different approach. Rab Daisa, Eimer, Shom and Lanes, Mashas, Eliasis. Before you give them a penny, you estimate, you prorate, what is it going to cost me to finish the job? If it takes me six dinar to find another fellow to finish, I deduct from their salary, instead of giving them a sell off for doing half the job, I take half of that away. I take two dinar of the four dinner in the cellar, and I shift that over to the next fellow who's going to finish the job. Why? Because because he holds Yad Poil al Tachtoina. The Poil just walks off the job. Sure, he has the right to do that. Torah said so, but at a cost. You can't cause me a loss. The fact is, it's going to cost me more now. I have a right to deduct that from your salary. Alternatively, you can finish the job and get fully paid to sell. Oh, pshita, why is the price have to mention that? It's not obvious. Finish it, you're paid. The Tzrichah must be speaking. So basically, it's going to be the opposite of the previous Gemara. Same, you know, factors, but just in the reverse. The Tzrichah de Zolavit must be speaking that the going rate dropped now. Right? They finished the, half the job. At that point, the going salary dropped. The Imer Bala Bayes. Now, Bayes decided to walk off the job. Fire it. You're fired. I want to get cheaper laborers. And the workers came running after me, convinced them to keep it going. Maudatema, perhaps he can say, Motsi, Amrli can turn to them, Adata, and tell them, Adata, Basrisli, Magrai. Magrai. You know what I had in mind? I was sure that you're going to forego some of your salary. So even if you finish the, complete the full project, I'll deduct something. Kamash, one the point is no. The Amrli, I can tell them, look, you're right, you deserve something extra because you, you, know, you allowed yourself to. But Adata Dabdin and you know what you're going to gain? Keep the salary at the same rate, but you're going to get better, more quality. Adata Dabdin and Shafirta, we had a mind to add more detail, to be more meticulous, to give you a, a better finished product. But in terms of salary, we've got to keep it as per our commitment. Sell on Islam, sell it. Now, if they quit midway, so, well, it only takes a seller to finish the job, so nobody's losing. 
So the employer gives them a sell-off for half the work that they did. Well, Pshita, obviously, why not? I mean, if he's not going to lose, why shouldn't he give them what they deserve? What happened was initially when they were hired, they saw that he wasn't really willing, so they dropped. They, they took a salary cut. They went a zuz below the going rate of two sella. Zolavita. And then the um so they dropped, right? But then eventually when as they're working as they're doing this uh, this this job, the going rate overall, the entire marketplace dropped. Right? So initially they dropped Azuz per cella, and that became the going rate. Just like the more earlier, right? They added Azuz per cella, right? Here they dropped. And then Everybody in the area took a pay cut. Maudatema, perhaps, he can tell them, look, I want a deduction. So if, if the going rate today is a seller minus a Zeus, I want a Zeus below that. Because after all, you were willing to work for less than the going rate, right? Maudatema bought a Zeus, I'm recently you contracted for a Azuz less than the going rate, but Azuz even the give you Azuz less than the going rate. Kamash wants the point is no. Damn they can tell him. Kiamar nelach but Azuz true. Initially we dropped Azuz because the liyav kim because you you did not accept that as the as the uh, it wasn't acceptable to you. You didn't want to. You didn't have the rotsen. You don't know that was the uh, fair rate, meaning. You don't want to go with a, a, a full a full seller, right? So we dropped Azuz. Hash to Kim Lucha, but this uh, this rate now is the rate that you accepted, that you committed to. Right? You're in your mind, right? you had a number, a picture in your mind. I'm gonna hire them for a seller minus it. That's what you got. It's so the bottom line. If a worker quits midway. Rabbanon say, Poyal wins. He takes no deductions. Rabbi Deza says, no. You have a right to walk away, but you're responsible for any repercussions, any damage resulting from your walk-off. I'm a Rav. Halach That's how we pass. Can ask for our mission, right? So if he causes me any losses, it costs me more, relatively more, to finish the job, I deduct that from here, this portion. Really? Rav holds like that? Umi Amar Rav Hachi Rav is of the opinion that the Poyal loses. Amar Rav, Rav himself says, Poyal Yacho Lach Sabayav Hafilo Vachatziah Yoyah. Poyal can back out even midday. Vachitema, perhaps you can say, it depends what he was commissioned for. Shani Leila Rav, Bidoisa, being schirus le kablonus. Oh, perhaps you can say that Abdoisa's idea only applies to a sucker, a laborer. Right, paying by the hour, by the, by the day, whatever. There, as Rashi explains, this time applies. You can't uh, force him to stay on because then he's like your slave. So there, Abdesa says he has full right to leave without penalty. But when it comes to a kablam who contracted to do a specific project, there, listen to the Russian Rashi on the bottom line. Rashi says, Gavaldi, Gavaldi, Kablon is Enza Evidelelatsme. Kablon is not your slave. He's working for himself, he's like self employed. He undertook to do a project on your to build a building, to dye a, a, a piece of material. He's working for himself, he's self employed. So until he finishes the he's committed to finish this project for me. Until he does that, he doesn't get he, he's responsible for any repercussions. So perhaps you can make that distinction. But you sucker, he can walk away without penalty, but not Kablanus. As per our mission, which is a Kablan, really? Is that true that this distinction holds true? That according to Rabbi Daisa, a sacher can just walk away without penalty? Which indicates that even a sacher can't do that without penalty. You hire him as a laborer. Midday, he hears about a relative that passed away, he can't work, or he got a fever. He's a sacher, meaning he's getting paid by the hour, by the day. Does he get paid for the work done? Yeah, that's nice, hurry, because it was an oinus, an accident, beyond his control. 
Im Kabunu, if he's a contracted worker, nice and Kabunu, so you give him, you know, you pay him for, his, uh, for the part that he did. But that's only because it was an oinus. Otherwise, you wouldn't be so generous. Mani, now who's speaking in this, in this price? Ilim Rabban, is the Rabbanon. Why do we need an oinus? My area is Shama Shemes Lemeis. Why is this specific to a case where it's an accident? Even without the anus factor, don't the Rabbanon say Yad Pail Al Yon? He has the upper hand. So it can't be the Rabbanon speaking. He must be Rabdaisa speaking. And we're speaking even by a Sochir, right? Bryce covers both cases. And still. The only way to be absolved is because it was an anus. Even a sacher can't just walk away with that penalty. Clearly, Rabbi does not make that distinction. No, maybe he does. Maybe even Rabbi would agree that by a sacher he can just walk away. There's Price is speaking about an exceptional case. It's something critical. You can't just walk away. The, you know, the pishtan is sitting in the a soaking pool, whatever, dropping the job midway would, would cost the employer immense loss. So here, all agree you can't just walk away without an anus. That's a good reason. Okay, now, Tanan, let's go back to our Mishnah. Kol HaMishana, Yoda, Alatartoyna. Mishnah concludes with two formulas. If you switch, you were asked to, uh, I don't know, to dye something red, you did a black, then you're going to pay for it. You're going to have the Yoda, Alatartoyna, you're going to have disadvantage. And then the Mishnah concludes with another point. The same thing if a person backs away from a deal. Now, now, why is the Mishnah repeating this? I mean, the Mishnah already discussed cases where workers backed away and quit. So, Bishlam called Mishana Yoda El Tachtoyne. We understand the first part. That's the famous halacha with the red and the black, you know, dye. The Sosam Latanak Rabbi The Tana here is following Rabbi Yehuda. Stam Mishnah, anonymous Mishnah like Rabbi Yehuda, that take a look at the, the expenses involved and the benefit that he caused, you know, the increase in value on the material and whatever is the lesser amount the, the fellow will get. Okay, that's one halacha, discussed later on in the Fayyin Ches. Okay, what about the second part of the conclusion of the Mishnah? Elokol HaMeshachoyzer boy. Yodai El-Tartoyin, whoever changes his mind, backs away from a deal. He loses. What, what, what's that covering? What case is that covering? The Mishnah already discussed contracted workers, right? So, so Omenin is a contractor, is a Kaplan. Apparently, we're trying to cover Sukhar as well, a laborer. Apparently, we're covering even a Poyal, a Sukhar, like Rab Doisa. You back off, you pay the repercussions. So clearly, Rab Doisa will not make any distinctions. So back to the Kasha. Rav says, we adopt Rav Daisa. Then Rav himself says, well, a worker can just have the full license to walk away. Sounds like without penalty. How do these two things, you know, work with each other? Ella, you're right. Rav Daisa himself, Tarati Kama, himself applies his idea to both, to Sakhar and Kabbalah without distinction. Walk away without penalty. But Rav selectively picked Savalak Gazei Bachada in one aspect. He held like Rabbi Daisa, which is by the Sacher, but by the uh, the Kablam, he disagreed. Rabbi Daisa held that a a worker has no right to just back away. I mean, he can do it, but he has to pay the consequences. Rab says no. Uh, if he's a, a Sacher, yeah. Because then there's a concern about looking like a, like a, like a slave, but by a kavla, there's no such concern. And if he walks away, if he walks off the job, he's penalized. Ibo, if, if, if he caused a loss. Ibo Yisim, another shot can be, no. That um, even Rabbi Daisa would agree that by a worker, a payala, you know, a sacher, he can walk off without penalty. What then does the Mishnah mean? Kala Choyzer boy. Whoever backs out the other, Tachtoni he loses. Look at the sun, it's not going on a work, it's going on a, a fellow who purchased a property. What, 
What case are we speaking about? Ruben sold a piece of property for a thousand dollars. But not only Moyes, we had Masayim Zuz. Shimon paid a down payment of two hundred dollars, and now somebody backed off, backed out of the deal. B'zman shah Moicher Chayzer Boifti, seller Ruben backed out. Yad lekech al tachal yaina. So Shimon has the upper hand, which means Ratsa Oyim Aloi Tenli Moisa. He can choose to ask for his money back. Oyim Tenli Karcha Kenek Moisa. He can ask and demand a sliver of property, as per his payment. Mechan Magbeil. What quality property will Reuben give Shimon? I mean, it is from his best properties. And soon the world will ask on that. I mean, he sold him this property. Why is he giving him from the best? We'll see in a minute. Uzman, that's when the Meicher backs out. Uzman Shalakeach is a way if the buyer backs out midway. So then it switches. Yad Meicher al So the seller has the upper hand. Ratzah Emerle Helech Meisach. Either you can offer him his money back or Ratzah Emerle Helech Karaka Kenech Meisach. I give him a piece of property. Corresponding to the value of that down payment. Mechem Magbe, what quality property will give him? Now Zibur is the worst of the worst. Okay. Rabbi Shimon, we we uh, educate them, we, we uh, try to arrange that they don't come to this point of backing out. Basically, they, um, we, 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 we educate a buyer. We tell him like this. Look, I know you only have partial payment, but you can do it in a way which will bind both sides, Kate and Hal. Koisavloi, he pays him the $200 as down payment, but, listen to this, a seller will write a star, Ani Plenim and Plenim, right? Myself, Ruben Mishim, Macharati Soda Plenim, Sol Plenim, I sold my field to Levi Venu, who developed this for $1,000, but not only me, my Simon's was, and he paid me $200, and very Nenoisha Boyches me Zeus. And I have an $800 claim on him, meaning it's like I lent him $800. So Rashi says, since he turned into a milbe, it's as though the money was paid to Reuben and relent to Shimon. So the, the property was fully paid for. I, I relent that money back to Shimon. He owes it to me as a loan. The sale is over. Now it's just an outstanding loan. Kana. So Shimon acquires the entire field. All the rest, the balance, whenever he pays it, even years later, it's a loan repayment. Okay, Amar Let's go back to that initial halacha. So, sold in the field, down payment $200, and the seller backs out. He has to give him, you know, a piece of property. What quality property? You know, it is from his best. Now, we figure at this point, it is the nechas. He looks around and gives him the best of his properties. What do you mean? Why? Why is a seller responsible to that extent? You know, at worst, at most, he owes him money, right? He owes him back his down payment. At most, he's like a balchayv. He owes money. But tonight, the halacha is, you give medium quality. Balchayv didn't have a benoinus. Why is he giving the best? Avoid another question. Here's the... Here's the land that you paid for. I mean, you gave me money for this property. Give him a piece of this property. Why do you have to give him better property? Amar Abnach Maritzok, you're right. That's not what I meant. Me'idah's Sheba. Of course, it's a sliver of this property. It's $200 worth of this property, but which corner? The best corner. We penalize the seller for backing out. He has to give him the best corner. Umi Zibur Sheba. Alternatively, if the buyer backs out, I said the seller has the option of giving him a piece of property as per his payment. He gives him the worst corner. Because we penalize the buyer for backing out. Let's go back to the other shot. The buyer backs out, he has to go find his best piece of property and give it to him. Why? Why the best? Look, Stam Mandazovan Aro. Typically, when a person makes this large purchase, Baal for a thousand dollars, that's a huge purchase. He's going to sell off his belongings, small properties, maybe at a loss, to finance that mega purchase. Ayizuli Moizel, Umaz bin He'll go down and take a cut when he sells the other properties. And now the seller backs out, you're causing me a loss. It's like he's a victim of a, of a nizak. He was harmed. With Tanana, we learned Hanizakin, a person who is a victim of nezek, he's entitled to collect from the best of the Mazik's properties. Shavon Lempidus. Rabbi Shem Leimer, well, we have a more simple system. We don't have to worry about backing out. Initially, they should articulate that it it's just an outstanding loan. 
field was sold, paid in full. It's not standing long. Malam dun oisan shlayachsur keitzad keitzadani plenty and plenty. Time of the cost of late. It only works because they arranged it in writing. The cost of lehachi, all the cost of hachi. But if they didn't actually articulate this, he just gave a down payment without articulating it. The rest is turning into a loan. Like Kony, he doesn't get ownership of the entire field. Really? Vatanya, listen to this b'risa, which brings Rabban and Shimon Lil himself, which indicates who indicates otherwise. Who indicates that you have a kinyan on the entire field, even by way of a partial down payment. So Shimon is buying a field worth a thousand. He deposits two hundred as an erov as a collateral, like this. Barmali tells Ruben, look, Imani Khoizerbi, if I back out, everybody machloch. You keep the two hundred dollars. A gift. Self penalty. Valoimer and Ruben responds likewise. Look, if I back out, I'm gonna double that down payment. Imani Khoizerbi, ech for the khar boy, I'll give you four hundred dollars. This guy might know him. This condition is binding. So the conditions are fully binding. Even though it's an exaggerated commitment, Rabbi Yisrael Tamei, he follows his opinion. The Omar Asmachta Kanya. Asmachta means a sort of exaggerated opinion, uh, commitment to uh, assure and to, uh, you know, substantiate his, his, his words and his commitment. It works. Rabbi Yisrael no. It's an exaggerated thing. At most, he'll get $200 worth of that field. He doesn't get the entire field. He, it is what it is. We don't exaggerate. Omar Rabbi Shimon Lil, by Mamur, when do we say that they could even back out? The, the concept of backing out is only that's only because when he gave him the two hundred dollars, he says, "You know, I want this to acquire the entire field," which obviously doesn't work because he's not selling him a thousand dollar field for two hundred dollars. So the, uh, the sale has not yet gone through. Aval Mocharloi Sodin. Belafzus, but suppose he sold him a thousand dollar field, but not only mayhem, Muhammad Mayazus, but he gave him five hundred dollars as partial payment. He didn't say this is gonna acquire the entire field. I'm still buying it for a thousand, but here's partial payment, right? The down payment. Kana umach is So this five hundred dollars is like Kesef, which is a kinya for the entire field. He gets the whole thing, and the rest he owes him. It's a loan. I feel like Kamashan if it takes some years to pay it up. And this is even without stipulating, even without articulating it. So why earlier did Rabbi Shimon say, unless you write it out, unless you stipulate it, it doesn't work? Says the Gemara, right? So initially he says that you can be chayzer unless you clearly articulate that you're doing it in this manner. It's a full kinyan, just the rest is alone. And here he says, it's a default assumption, it's assumed. You pay partially, it's a kinyan on everything, and the rest is just alone. You can't be chayzer. So the more like, Kasha answers like this. Depends. The earlier halacha was speaking where the seller is coming in and out. He's banging on the buyer's door. I need my money. I need my money. Clearly indicating that his motivation, his interest was to make this money. He was desperate for money. So until he gets his money, his full payment, he's not interested in selling the field. So it's not a sale. He just back out. Oh, the like I have enough of Whereas the most recent case is speaking that the seller is not harassing the buyer for his money. So apparently, that wasn't really his motivating factor, and therefore he says, "Look, I'll get my money whenever." In the meantime, it's sold. The number of Azraba tells us the same idea. Hayman the Zavit mini middle chaver person sells something to his friend. The Kaiel of Kazuzi, and he's running after him for the payment. Like honey, so even if the other fellow made a kinyan mashicha. It's not his until he pays. Like I have enough because the the seller is not after his buyer for his money. Then Kani, once the buyer makes a mashicha, physical acquisition is kind even before actually paying. V'am Rav, comes another lacha from Rav. Ha'iman the oisfei me'azuz the chaver person lends his friend a hundred zuz at once, which allows him to make a proper investment. Right? He has a lot of money now. Upari zuz zuz, and the fellow decides to pay him back. You know, Azusa at a time, penny at a time, that's not nice. Pro and Havi, of course, he fulfilled his obligations, he paid up his loan, but El the Isla Tarim is Gabay. The lender could be very unhappy with him. You know why? The Amali can tell him, Absidusinu, you're making, causing me loss, I'm going to lose these, these pennies. Also, you know, 
how much could he do? What could he do with one, two, three dollars at a time? I mean, I gave it to you lump sum, I expect a back lump sum, which gives me access to all kinds of deals. How Gavad, there's another story of a fellow, Zavon Lechamel Le Chaveri, sold his friend. He sold a donkey to his friend. He got paid minus a dollar. And he's running after him for that balance. You also have Asher come Ayim, but Rashi was sitting, examining the case. What would you say in this case? I mean, he paid him everything minus a Zuz. Is that going to hold back the deal or not? Of course. Quoted Rava, paid Rava, whether you still owe him a dollar or a million dollars. Fact is, he wants his money. Until that happens, he's not kind of Zuz, one coin, because Zuz is dumb as like many. Well, like Connie, there's no kidney until you pay it up. I'm only Rav. Acha bid Rav Yisra Vashi. Didn't we quote Rav who says Connie that if he's just, you know, one dollar left, of course he's kind of. How does that fit with what you're saying that every penny holds it up? I'm only, he says to Tagrish Shmaitzach, your Allah can be applied in a special case. But Moichar Sadeh, a person selling his field because it's bad, but maybe also because of its inferior state. See here, as Rashi explains, we all know. He's not just motivated by his money. He wants to get rid of the field. He would have sold it even without getting paid right away. He doesn't want the buyer to back, back away and regret the sale, the purchase. So here, um, even if he, he hasn't paid at all, says Tesis, as soon as the buyer makes a Kenyan, it's his. Okay, let's recap today's stuff. We spoke about hiring workers and something happened midway. Uh, who's responsible, depending on the circumstance, if he had advance notice and he should have informed him or not. We had the Machlech between Rabban and Rabdaisa regarding a poil, whether we say Yad Poyal al Tachtoyna, Yad Poyal al Yayna, we wanted to make a chalik between Schiris and Kablonis. Then we had a whole new discussion regarding a Moichar and Lekeach. If somebody backs out of a deal, had a deal with that, and we concluded with the Allah of uh, a seller looking after his money and whether that holds back the deal. All the best to you, that's Lachar Rabbah.